Now, I keep hearing about these BMF niggas, bro. I keep saying, bro, they got a show called BMF. I don't know which one. I don't know what is on, bro, but I just know they got a show called BMF. I keep hearing about this BM, these BMF. I think it's a BMF family. What do BMF even stand for? But anyway, uh, we finna get to the video, bro. What's good, YouTube? This your boy, Only One Kitty B, and I'm back with another video. In today's video, bro, we got the story of BMF. I don't even, I don't know if they was a drug lord family. I don't know if they was a, uh, the cartel. Man, I don't know what the BMF people was. But we finna find out, bro. If y'all new to the channel, bro, make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe. And we, let's get to it, bro. Let's find out about the BMF family. A lot of rappers that voice <clears throat> about being drug lords and running the streets. Most of the time, it's all cat. That's what makes the story of the Black Mafia family so wild. Black Mafia? Most people thought they were just flashy promoters, party with rappers, and flex a lot of cash. But behind the crazy whips and mansions, BMF was actually running one of the biggest drug rings in U.S. history. And today, we're breaking down how they reached the top. Bro, hold that time, time out. Time out. I thought it was only three BMF members. I thought it was like a family. My, I, could, I, I guess you could say it is a family, but I thought it was only three people. I thought it was Big Meech, Lower Meech, and somebody else. <clears throat> I didn't know there was a whole... Uh... So you mean, hold up, bro. You mean to tell me they gave the Black Mafia family a, a TV show? Man, that man, what the... F man, we finna can't tell you, bro. Recent Terry Flannery, a.k.a. Big Meech and South Plus T, came up in Big Detroit Meech. while they were growing up. Like. They saw their parents constantly struggle with poverty. They would get their power shut off, or run out of food stamps bro. and meet the family. And eventually... My bad, bro, for pausing. I just realized what Rick Ross was saying. Remember, he was like, I think I'm Big Meech, huh? Larry Hoover. This who he was talking about? Bro, I did not know, bro. That's crazy. Money issues caused Meech and Terry's parents to divorce. At the time, Meech and Terry were still in high school. They knew that their mom needed help with the bills and started selling a little weed to help get by. But then, everything changed after they linked up with a dude named E.D. Boy who ran a crew called the 50 Boys. Boyd is one of the okay. biggest dealers in Detroit back then. And the crack epidemic that was tearing the city apart made him rich. Meech and Terry started moving coke for Boyd and saw how much money there really was in the drug game. They were able well, to yeah, pay some weed. But getting into coke was a totally different level. But when you really grind it in the streets, there's always going to be issues with other hustlers. Meech and Terry started beefing with another dealer named Ladon Simon. And the situation got so heated that Ladon allegedly tried to take Meech out in a drive-by. Even though he was almost killed, Meech Damn. wasn't backing down. Terry and him ended up finding their own plug to bring coke into the city, and that's when their empire really started to take off. Most big dealers either end up dead or in prison, but E.D. Boyd actually retired from the game and didn't have any issues with Meech and Terry taking over. He told DJ Vlad that they're all so still Meech wasn't born yet. and he just got out of the hustle when the time was right. Terry and Meech were supplying weight to almost every dealer in the city, and all the success just made their issues with Ladon even worse. One night at a party, their crews got into a fight, and someone started letting off shots. Don says he grabbed Meech to use him as a shield, and that's when Ladon's brother Elvis was shot and killed. Ladon let go of Meech and ran over to his brother, and the shooter caught him five times in the back. His brother was killed, but Ladon survived the shooting, and a few months later, he took another shot at Meech. Meech was partying with a bunch of people in Ladon's area at a diner. Ladon's 10-year-old nephew had just been beaten to death around the same time, and he had just lost his brother, so he was already on edge. It's not clear exactly what went down that night, but LaDonna allegedly pulled his gun and shot Meech several times. Getting Damn. shot makes a lot of people switch up how they move or leave the streets behind completely. But Meech was back on his feet just a few days later and went even harder into the drug game. But just taking over Detroit wasn't enough for him. And in 1990, he moved to Atlanta to expand the empire. While Terry stayed back in Detroit, Meech went to the East Coast and started taking over. Instead of rolling into Atlanta, trying to push out all the dealers in the city, Meech went to all the clubs and started flexing sounds of cash. Everyone saw him stunned, and that's how Meech met all the major players in Atlanta. Meech didn't resort to violence to take over a new city. Instead, he started supplying weight to the dealers who already ran Atlanta. That way, he avoided most of the street drama while bringing in even more money. Back then, Terry and Meech had a plug in Colombia, and the weight was brought into the U.S. on the East Coast from Florida. After the cops started cracking down on the shipments coming in, Meech moved to L.A. to find a new connect. Meech found a new plug on the West Coast. Within bruh. a few years, they expanded it out. How don't these motherfuckers be getting, bro? I don't be like how the how they don't be getting caught, bro. Like they, 
Like, I don't, I don't be understanding this. They got a whole motherfucking mafia cartel shit going on, and they, I don't know, bro. Black, black, uh, what's that shit called? What's that, what BMF stand for again? Uh, black mafia family, I think. Yeah, I thought BMF was only a part, like, three people, bro. I thought it was just, like, a son and a, a son and a father thing, honestly, bro. So this shit caught me off guard, bro. Alabama, Florida, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, North Carolina, and more. Terry and Misha are already running one of the biggest drug rings in the country. But in the early 2000s, the Black Mafia family went from just a crime organization to a full-on brand. Terry and Misha were always hanging out with rappers, and in the 2000s, Misha created BMF Entertainment as a label and promotion agency. Having a legit company to launder your money through is a smart move, but Misha's lifestyle and the BMF brand is what got the attention of the feds. Terry and Misha have been in the drug game together for years, but they always had issues when it came to Misha's party. Terry was more low-key and knew that flexing all their money could get attention from the cops. Yeah. But that's also how Misha brought Terry's up his smart. business. Whenever he went to a new city, Misha would walk into the club and draw 50 to 100k every night. All the hustlers would notice the new guy throwing around crazy money, and that's how Misha would link up with local dealers. Back in the day, it wasn't that big of a deal. But when Meech started BMF Entertainment, he put the spotlight on the whole organization. The BMF brand popped off in the rap industry, but nobody knew where all the cash came from. Meech was flexing his cars, mansions, and even put up billboards advertising the company. Yeah, Terry BMF was done how Meech was moving, though. And that's when their relationship started to fall apart. Yes, they are. But before BMF went down, Meech got caught up in a double homicide in 2003. In November 2003, Meech was at a spot called Club Chaos in Atlanta. He got into an argument with a dude named Anthony Wolf Jones, who used to be Diddy's bodyguard. And at some point, shots started going off. It's not clear who started shooting first, but Jones and his homie Lamont Gertie were both killed, and Meech got shot in the ass. Meech was booked for in double homicide, Whoa, but the judge was shot at? cross arrest since the case against him was so weak. By this point, Terry and him were barely even talking to each other, and Meech getting arrested hurt their relationship even more. While Meech was locked up in Atlanta, Terry was still running his business on the West Coast. And during his 34th birthday, a bunch of Meech's goons came through wearing shirts that said, Free Big Meech. They brought in the monitor so Meech could address the party. And by the time Free he was done talking, Meech. the situation allegedly got so heated that both sides had their guns out. Luckily, nothing too serious went down at the party, but the end of BMF was getting close. The cops have been trying to investigate BMF since the 90s, but they didn't have a major break in the case until 2004. The first cracks in the organization opened up when wiretaps led the cops to a dude named DeCarlo Hoskins. Hoskins was a pretty small-time dealer in Atlanta, but he flipped on two brothers in Mamari McCree and Jeffrey Lear, who were both in BMF. And when the cops put a wiretap on them, they discovered that Amari was a high-ranking member of BMF and that Meech really liked him. The cops used a wiretap to pick up Jeffrey while he was transporting 10 kilos of coke. They let him go that day so they could gather more evidence from him. And that's when Jeffrey and Amari tried to do the race. Eventually, the cops found both of them. And that was the beginning of the downfall. People all up and down the organization started to flip. And then, the cops got their biggest piece of evidence yet. A wiretap on Terry's phone. Terry and Meech were always fighting about Meech drawing attention to BMF. But there's a chance they'd still be free today if Terry didn't do business over the phone. The cops had him bugged for five months. And by the end of the investigation, they had 900 pages of evidence just from his phone conversations. Damn. The DEA spent two years gathering evidence on it. Just from his phone conversations. The DEA spent two years gathering evidence on it. By October 2005, they had already arrested 17 members of BMF and seized millions in cash, drugs, and other assets. Then they booked 30 more members of the crew, including Meech and Terry. According to the so cops, Meech, they BMF jail? was moving an insane 2,500 kilos of coke every month. It was one of the biggest drug rings in the world. And it was alleged that Meech and Terry had over 500 people working for them at the height of BMF. Around 150 people were arrested during the investigation. Meech and Terry both pleaded guilty and were sentenced to 30 years each. And with all God the high-ranking members behind bars, BMF was dead and gone. Terry and Meech started out selling baggies of weed on the streets of Detroit and worked up to running a criminal empire that brought in hundreds of millions of dollars. They were able to dodge the cops for a while. When you move in that much weight, it's only a matter of time before something goes wrong. Right. But in 2020, Terry was released on house arrest to serve out the rest of his sentence. During the coronavirus pandemic, a lot of prisoners got out early to help slow the spread. But Meech wasn't as lucky. His lawyer tried to get him an early release too, but the plan got shut down. The U.S. attorney said during his time in prison, Flannery continues to promote himself and through others, his legacy as a highly successful professional drug dealer. 
Nothing in that promotion suggests that Flannery has changed. Even though he didn't get released at the same time as Terry, Meech still scored a big win in 2020. He was originally scheduled to get out in 2031, but sentencing guidelines have changed over the years, and Meech's legal team was able to get a few years knocked off of his time. Big Meech will probably be out in 2028 now. That's still a long time to sit behind bars, but Meech and Terry knew that was always a possibility. Like a lot of kids who grew up in inner cities surrounded by crime 2028 is crazy, Meech and Terry just adapted to their surroundings, did whatever it took to survive. But while most dudes just make a few racks in the streets so they can flex nicer clothes and cars, Meech and Terry took it way further and created one of the most famous empires out of Detroit. Their story's beyond wild. And that's why everyone's still talking about them almost two decades after they were arrested. They made it out of the trenches to become two of the richest drug dealers in the world. But in the end, all of their money and power still gonna keep the feds off of their backs. Right. Nobody knows what's gonna happen when they finish their sentences, but hopefully they stay out of the streets and move on from BMF. But yeah, bro, that's gonna do it, bro. If y'all enjoyed that, if you asked, make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe. I think I'm Big Meech, huh? Larry Hoover, huh? Ripping work, hallelujah. One nation under. Say, nah, but uh, we, we, we out of here, bro.